If you've been shopping in a mall or online for clothing recently, you may have noticed a trend. An increase in fashion promising it's more sustainable. Even the printed design is plant-based. Environmentally friendly. That's why 79% of our garments already have sustainable properties. More shoppers want fashion that is less impactful on the planet, and companies are responding. It's a very, very big trend right now. So there's a huge increase in the market of stuff labeled as sustainable. While some companies are doing the right thing, many consumers we spoke with are skeptical. They're using all the right words, but I don't see it actually being put into practice. If I'm going to buy something that claims to be eco, am I asking the cashier like if they know? Honestly, no. Pretty vague terms like natural, organic, sustainable, vegan, those kinds of terms are being used. Kelly Drennan is the founding executive director of Fashion Takes Action. For more than 16 years, her nonprofit has been working to advance sustainability in Canadian fashion. And so what they're doing is, is they're actually misleading the consumer into thinking that those products are made sustainably by using those kinds of words and making the assumption that the consumer does not know any better and doesn't have the time to actually do the research. And so they end up buying the product because they think they're doing something better for the planet. She says she's seen it all, including companies greenwashing their way into Canadian closets. It's the Wild West, really, in terms of what claims are being made and what companies are getting away with. Is it frustrating to you sometimes to see these wild claims being made? It is 100% frustrating because there are some brands that legitimately are doing great things. The ones who are doing it properly have the certifications to back up those claims or they're being transparent. They'll allow you sort of behind the scenes so you can actually get in there and see if what they're saying is legitimate. And then you've got the brands that are jumping on the bandwagon and taking advantage of the consumer. While deceptive marketing in general is illegal in Canada, Kelly wants the government to step up. There's some countries where there are more laws in place now, anti-greenwashing laws, transparency laws, um, which really protect the consumer at the end of the day. But like in anything, there's good actors and there's bad actors. Our overconsumption of fast fashion makes the industry one of the most polluting and problematic for the planet. In Canada, textiles in our landfill is actually higher than electronics. So you've got the synthetics, the polyester, nylon, acrylic, spandex, that's plastic. So when it is in the landfill, it's never going to biodegrade. We really need to slow down our consumption. We buy too much stuff. We buy 60% more clothes today than we did 20 years ago. We keep our clothes for half as long. Some consumers are paying attention. List, a fashion technology company, analyzes shoppers' behavior. It found searches for sustainable fashion in Canada rose by 37% in 2020. It means companies truly dedicated to sustainable practices have to figure out how to set themselves apart. This is the photo shoot for Christy Sumer's latest collection. She's the founder and CEO of Canadian-made clothing brand Encircled. That looks great. Okay, now we're gonna reverse it. She started the company in 2012, and about four years in, wanted to set the brand apart from others making sustainability claims. She applied for B Corp status, a private certification that investigates social, environmental, and business practices, all at her own expense. Having that third-party audit was really important to showing that we are actually doing what we're saying we're doing. And I think at that time, I had started seeing a lot more greenwashing start to happen. A few fast fashion brands had launched, you know, conscious collections, and I was starting to feel a lot more pressure around that, and I could see that sustainability was becoming a challenge for us to separate ourselves from those that were greenwashing. Part of the issue with sustainability is the complex labyrinth of the fashion supply chain. The brand is growing locally. Encircle Designs in-house makes half of its fabric in Toronto. 
and everything is sewn within a 60 kilometer radius of its studio. So this is your everyday dress that we're doing. Jack's cutting your purchase order now. Wow. All these considerations come with a higher price. A lot of people will look at sustainable fashion and say, it's more expensive to buy this shirt. And it absolutely is because of our supply chain, because of our labor practices, um, because of the time it takes to design it and the scale that we have as a brand. This idea that you buy like 20 dresses for $10 that you wear once and then you toss them out, it's not sustainable for us as a, a planet. Education is a key component of Kelly's work. Thousands of companies have enlisted her help. So much variety now since you first launched. Today, she's visiting Wexley in Toronto, checking out its new fabrics. The dyes, the fabrics, all of that gets tested rigorously. It's a Canadian outerwear company, also with B Corp certification. One of a small number in Canadian apparel to have the designation. We don't work with just the industry, so the people who make and sell clothes. We also work with the people who buy it, wear it, care for it, and eventually dispose of it. And if we're talking about changing a system, you have to work with every single stakeholder who is a part of that system. And that also means brands and nonprofits are doing most of the educating. It's really the industry's responsibility. Brands should be raising awareness within, you know, within their customer base about what positive impacts that they are having. At the same time, you know, governments really need to be stepping up as well. Public access to education and knowing how our products are being made, where they're being made, and what impact they have on people and planet is something that the government really should care more about. Bob Kirk is the executive director of the Canadian Apparel Federation, representing a wide range of clothing and manufacturing companies in Canada. Whose responsibility is it ultimately? I think companies need to explain themselves. Rather than just having a tagline, or a simple statement, we're green, what is it? What does it mean for you? Bob says some companies are now green hushing, choosing not to publicize sustainability efforts or claims. To make those kind of claims is easy. So that's why I think a lot of people are sort of pulling back uh, in larger companies in particular because they're worried about enforcement and they realize how complicated their supply chain is. It's all over the world, multiple factories, multiple suppliers. So essentially it's being called green hushing and it is caution. They're still doing all the things that they're doing. And again, we recommend to our members and to all companies to be very guarded in what they say. To tackle green claims overall, the EU recently proposed a new law to hold companies accountable, including in fashion. The UK is also cracking down on fashion greenwashing. For now, Canada is not making any changes. We don't need to change all our laws. We just need to find a way that works for the Competition Bureau and for industry and ultimately for consumers. But the one thing I would say is that the Competition Bureau has been reluctant to, to take that up. They have other priorities and that's fine. Uh, but I would say it's gonna be helpful. So we reached out to the Competition Bureau to see if it plans to increase enforcement of greenwashing in fashion. The Bureau declined an on-camera interview and did not respond to questions by a production deadline. Kelly continues her mission. Fashion is something that we all can relate to. You know, we don't all drive cars or own homes. I mean, we all wear clothes. We get up every day and we put on clothes. We really want to see a conscious fashion system. And at the same time, we recognize that perfection doesn't exist in this space. If the industry does it collectively, then we can actually, you know, make some changes and advance sustainability.